So this is the part that we call the afterburn. I know I had enough pauses in there, Marty, when I wasn't saying anything that you could probably gain a few minutes to pull some of that out if it went a little bit too long. Look, I am passionate about this because I care about you. I'm passionate about this because I feel your pain when you struggle, even if you want to tell me to my face that you're not struggling. I know you're struggling. But you're so used to where you are that you're not thinking about it as a struggle anymore. Because you don't have that other, uh, other life to compare it to when you're not struggling. So this is the part we call the afterburn. If you have a comment or question, you can raise your hand. And um, who's coming up to, okay, Bryson, you get the mic? Okay, Michael's coming up to get the mic. Okay. Nate's got to go make sure people are not dying in the emergency room. And we appreciate that you come as much as you can and stay because you're in those emergency services and, you know. And so, uh, look, somebody's got to be there when those emergencies happen, even on Shabbat. Okay, we're going to begin by, with, uh, with Rabbi Tom. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, I couldn't help uh, something one verse ahead of where you stopped caught my eye. In verse 15 of uh, Mishra 3, it says, She is more precious than rubies. And then if we go over to uh, Mishra 31, the Ashath Hayil, the ideal woman, that's exactly how it starts out. For she is worth far more than rubies. And one's talking about a capable wife. And back in Proverbs 3, it's talking about wisdom and understanding. And I just see some kind of a relationship there. Awesome. Between, and maybe uh, we'll mention that next week when we continue starting in verse 15. That's okay. good. I will make a note of that. Right. And so we'll connect verse 15 to Proverbs 31. By the way, you should be making the connection. I'll say it now, but I'll probably say it again next week. That the connection at very least is that the Proverbs 31 woman is walking in wisdom. Okay. And that's why she's to be highly esteemed, because she is walking it. She's living it. And that's why we're connecting wisdom with wisdom and understanding. So she's walking with wisdom and understanding. Okay. The, the only one I have is from right now is from uh, Janet Hoffman. Uh, wants to know how do we become completely self... I think she meant... She says, how do we completely, be, how do we become completely self-sovereign and under your, Yahweh's authority? I think she meant out of self-sovereignty. <laughs> okay, so first, first off, and I, I, I'll explain it again. You have to recognize that you've given over authority to people that you may not even realize you've given it. And you have to think about who has the most influence in your life. If there's a worker, a family member, a friend or somebody that when they speak, you listen and that generally you do what they say or you don't do what they say not to do, then they are someone you've given a certain amount of authority or sovereignty in your life. And so you have to first look for that. Ask yourself that question. Who do I fear, respect, have reverence for whatever that when they talk, it affects my decision making. They influence me to do or not do. When you realize who all of them are, take that authority away. That doesn't mean make a phone call and tell them, I'm taking your authority away. Just stop letting them do it. And once you've done that with all of those that are speaking into your life, you now have full sovereignty again. And then you take that sovereignty, which is why you do not put the crown on your own head, and you hand it over to Yeshua and say, now you're the only one I'm going to let speak into my life. And I'm going to only allow the ones that you put in between us as the human beings that you use as your, as your uh, tools as, uh, in your hand, as your servants. And I'm not going to allow anything else. Here's the crown. But you can't give a crown when other people still have it on their head. Because you go to give the crown and Yeshua is looking at you like, yeah, but that's only one of six of them. Where are the other four or five or six of them that you've given other people? He says, because I can't talk to you and have authority if you got five other people you're listening to also. Because then if there's a conflict, which one gets to win? 
sometimes the wrong one. Think about it. Okay, so hopefully that answers Janet's question. So it starts off with you asking the question, who actually am I allowing to influence my life? <coughs> okay, from um, Cheryl wants to know, as a Torah observant stay-at-home mom and wife, how does she tithe when her non-Torah observant husband does not believe in it? Okay, so what is tithing on? And by the way, go back and listen to the tithing teaching. That'll help. Um, what is tithing on? Increase that you generated. If you are the wife and you are at home and you're not working, how much have you generated? Nothing. It's his. If he doesn't tithe, it's his problem. You can make an offering if he lets you. You can't tithe on something you did not actively produce. The stay-at-home moms are not tithers. They aren't producing anything actively. I'm not saying they're not working and doing a hard job, but they're not generating income. And so if your non-believing husband or non-covenanted husband, whatever you want to word him, is not wanting to tithe, well, that's okay. That's his problem. You are not licensed. To, and I, some ladies do this, and I, and I tell them to stop. You cannot just go ahead and sneakily tithe his money just to get yourself in all kinds of trouble. Yahweh's not going to punish you for what he's not doing. Now, he may punish him, and you may get some of the kind of collateral damage of that. But that's between him and Yahweh. If you have a little job on the side, a little something, anywhere you're making, you're generating something through your effort, and we talk about this extensively on the teaching, then that would be what you would tithe on. If you're getting Social Security, that's money you already should have tithed on. It's, a, it's an insurance benefit, it's not an income. Okay, you can make an offering off of it if you want. Social Security is not an income. It's an insurance benefit. Social Security is SSI, Social Security Insurance, basically, to ensure that you're not impoverished when you retire. Of course, it's not enough money at this point to really insure that, but, okay, so it's not an income. It was generated by taxes taken out of your income that you should have tithed on already. Now, if you say, well, I never tithed on that, on that money. Well, fine, if you want to tithe on it, it's not really going to be considered a tithe, but you can take 10% and make it an offering. Then it's an offering, okay? Hopefully that answers the question. But I, I'm guessing that either you don't remember or haven't listened to the tithing teaching yet, so I would encourage you, go listen to the uh, multi-part teaching on tithing. I think it was called tithing, something about appreciating the blessings, okay? How many parts? Is it three parts? Three or four parts? Okay. It's in the CC 101 program, the Covenant Community 101 program. You know, and some of you may think, well, I took license to just really talk about tithing a lot this time. But isn't it interesting, of all the things that could have been brought up in Proverbs 3, it's the, what we do with our stuff and the money that he brought up. I mean, he could have brought up almost anything in terms of Torah observance, where the discipline would have come into play and some other thing. No, he brought up how we handle our stuff. And the reason is I think that's where we find some of our biggest challenges. I'm looking at rather than type of response to everyone who's posting stuff, a lot of what's being posted is a very uh, personal and individualized answers they're looking for. So I'm asking that they just call during the week for counsel because they're specific to their circumstance, not, <coughs> not general questions. <laughs> okay, that's, that's well played. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you have very specific unique problems and issues that you would like addressed that are unique to your situation, we are happy to try to help you just contact us during the week. All right? Um, let me go in order of effectiveness. I'll go least effective. Emailing me, least effective. Facebook messaging me, second least effective. Calling the number if you can, or trying to get in touch with Robert first, admin at M2I, and I'm sure he put that in there. That is much more effective than trying to reach me directly, okay? If you already know how to reach me directly, then do so. Okay, some of you have my, my number, et cetera. If for some reason I have called you on my cell phone, if I have not told you you can call me back on it, don't. <laughs> okay? Because sometimes to make calls, I have to do them when I'm traveling and mobile, and I will call you from my cell phone. That doesn't now mean you have license to call my cell phone. But some of you do. 
Some of you I'm discipling, I'm counseling at whatever level, and I've told you, yes, you can call me and you have ways to reach me directly. That weed? Um, just for me and my house, I wanted to thank you for being there for us, um, for counseling us, for discipling me before I even came down here. I just wanted to say thank you, Rabbi. I appreciate that. But let me say something. Let me, I'll thank you back. Thank you for not despising reproof and not loathing correction because you have had plenty, not saying anything negative, and you've handled it and it's born good fruit. Okay? And so that's an example that I think is a good one because, you know, he came with a lot of things that needed to be dealt with, and we've dealt with a lot of them. And, and you know what? Out of that, he's employed, he's married. He, I mean, there's all this wonderful fruit that wasn't there when we first met. Okay? And I'm not taking any credit for it. I'm giving him the credit of being willing to come under authority and accept correction and have faith to trust that Yahweh was using me to do that. And then he gave you all those blessings. Okay, I'm in. Okay, uh, Lynn. This is a true confession kind of thing. Um, some of you may know that I've, like I fell off the face of the earth after the Pesach. I came home to vandalism on a level that I just, I've been going through this for 21 years. Um, and I had a friend locally who's part of our body that I was close with. And um, spending some time with her, she told me that um, obviously, you know, Yahweh was judging me. And um, I took that on. And I let that affect, I was kind of mending up things and ready to kind of reintroduce myself back to my sisters who had fallen off the face of the earth who really cared about me. And you all know who you are. Um, but I let that, I was ready to integrate back in. and And I just really couldn't conceive of losing these dear, sweet, and spicy sisters of mine. And so I stayed off the, you know, and the crimes kept happening. I mean, I had identity theft five times from April 1st, what was it, Pesach, to oh, four times in a five-week period. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. Um, so I really have escaped something huge in California that's been going on in my life for many, many years. So I just want to, uh, I really thank you for <laughs> setting it straight for me that, um, I was taking that on. It seemed really Christian easy to me, but I just couldn't handle the loss of these people. But I, I it felt like, uh, an abandonment and burn probably from them. So I just, I want to reach out to every single person who I may have hurt um, in that process because I never would purposely hurt a soul. And I think you may know that about me, but please rest assured that I've missed you all very, very much. And I'm now safe. <laughs> I'm safe. Amen. And, and I praise you all way for bringing me here. Amen. So thank you. Amen. I mean, listen, I want to say something I should have said earlier. I didn't say, but I should have said, look, the people that are trying to speak into your life, I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm not saying they're evil or any other thing. Just be careful of how much authority you give them. They're doing it because they think they're right. They're probably doing it because they love you and they're concerned or whatever it is. But just be careful the level of authority you give them. That's all. <clears throat> okay? They're not trying to cause you a problem. I'm sure of that. At least most, some of them might, but it's very rare. So I would never even guess that that's the problem. I mean, the, the likelihood of it is very slim. But that doesn't mean that problems may not come if you're just listening to someone you give authority that you shouldn't have. Okay? So it's really about that. So please don't think for a second that I'm trying to attack or, or say negative things about all these people in your life that may be trying to influence you they're probably coming from a right place. But coming from a right place doesn't make it not wrong. You can still do wrong things coming from a right place. And that's what we need to understand. Look at poor Uzzah when he went to touch the ark. Okay? He wanted to steady it. It looked like it was going to fall off the ark. Well, when he touched it, he got zapped because he wasn't supposed to touch it. <laughs> but I'm sure his motivation was right. He thought, I mean, what would, how, what, how, any of us would have done the same thing. 
You're standing there. The thing's bouncing along. It looks like it's about to bounce off of the cart. You reach out to touch it. But Yahweh showed us in that moment, and that's why that story is in your Bible, that having right reasons doesn't justify doing a wrong thing. Okay? So just understand that I'm not attacking any of those people that are trying to help you or whatever reason, they're, whatever they're doing. Just be careful of the level of authority you give them. What right else? Anybody else? Shabbat Shalom! Shavuot Tov! We love you! Love you all! Have a great week. Blessings.